Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Aesthetics and Wellness by Dr. Yusra. On this podcast, I have Sophie Wilson and we are talking today about sun protection. I'm explaining what SPF actually means, when you should be wearing it, how much you should be wearing, the difference between chemical SPFs or sunscreens and mineral sunscreens. And we're talking about fads, trends, things that you should be doing and things that you absolutely should never be doing. Hope you enjoy. Welcome, Sophie, to today's yeah. episode. So today we're talking all about SPF or sun yes. protection and hopefully trying to bust some myths. Um, now, I'm going to just tell the whole wide world that I have a cold, <laughs> so I sound a little bit funny. I'm going to try not to cough through this. And I know you have a whole range of questions for me. So I do. I do. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. I suppose the first question is, what is SPF and what does it stand for? SPF is sun protection factor. Okay. And essentially what it means is how much that little gel or cream in a bottle is going to protect you. And SPF is generally, it's given a rating between SPF 2 to SPF 50. Can you imagine some people wearing SPF 2? Mm-hmm. And what that number indicates is how long you can stay in the sun okay. uh, before you burn. So for example, SPF 30 means that you can stay in the sun 30 times longer than if you weren't wearing SPF. Uh, But it's important to understand that SPF is only a measure of one type of protection from one type of sun ray. So that from when the sun's rays come through, there's various different types of sun rays, including UVA, UVB, infrared radiation, etc. And visible light. UVB, think of UVB for burning and A for aging. Okay. So there's a difference in UVA and UVB. Mm -hmm. And... SPF is a measure of sun protection against UVB and UVB alone, not as a protection of UVA. And both UVA and UVB can cause skin cancer. Okay. Okay. And this is relevant to everyone. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about SPF, I think a lot of people think, oh yeah, we're just talking about sun protection. And it's this like magical cream that will protect us from all sorts of sun rays. That's simply not true. SPF is only a measure of protection against UVB, not UVA. Okay. So what is the difference between UVA and UVB? Okay. So generally speaking, UVA, think of UVA, the A to stand for aging okay. and B for burning. In the UK, what we feel is UVA, what we, well, what we don't see much of is UVB. Okay. Yeah. Because most of the time, out of our 365 days, we maybe get five days of sunshine. Yeah. We're not high on sunshine no. here. And so most people in the UK are not wearing sun protection in any form. In fact, it's been quoted to be 25% of the British public do not wear sun protection. And 90% of premature aging comes from the sun. And that's not the burning sun rays, it's the aging sun rays. And the aging sun rays come through whether it's raining, Mm -hmm. whether it's cloudy, whether it's snowing, and even penetrate through the glass in your windows. Okay. So even if you're sat at home on a cloudy, rainy day in the middle of winter, you are still getting exposure to UVA, which will age you. These are the rays that penetrate through the skin, yeah. impact the cell's DNA, result in what we call disorganization of the elastin called elastosis. So you get lines, you get wrinkles, you get pigmentation. So they will cause you to age. Okay. okay. And they are also responsible for skin cancer. Mm-hmm. UVB is the hot rays that when you go in the sun, you feel the heat. That's the UVB coming through. And UVB is responsible for sunburns. And of course, if you burn, then you are more likely to get uh, skin cancer. And I think a lot of people don't realize that actually skin cancer is very much on the rise. Um, And melanoma, which is a form of skin cancer, and you and I were talking about this earlier because both of us know patients and people, even family members who've been diagnosed with melanoma, Melanoma is a form of skin cancer that is malignant, Mm -hmm. that can be fatal and that can spread. So it's not limited to the area that that, uh, it was in, unlike, for example, squamous cell carcinoma, which is a type of skin cancer that is usually limited to the location that it is within. It's very slow spreading. Um, You can also get basal cell carcinomas, very slow spreading. Mm -hmm. But melanomas are malignant, which means they can spread to other organs in the body and can cause fatality. This is the fifth most common cancer in the UK. I feel like you don't hear that a lot. It's not spoken about really. Yeah. I don't think people are educated on skin cancer in general. Mm -hmm. 
until they find until they know someone who's had it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's a lot of unsafe practices out there, which we we can talk about today, trans fads, etc. So melanoma is one thing that you need mm-hmm. to be concerned about, be aware of. Yeah. And it can happen in patients of all skin color. Just because I'm Arab with olive colored skin doesn't mean I can't get melanoma. Yeah. I absolutely can. Patients who are skin of color can get skin cancer and do get skin cancer. And this is very much on the rise. But when you are pale, you are more likely to burn um, and you are at a higher risk of developing uh, skin cancer. So it's important to understand that and know the signs um, and know that wearing SPF reduces the risk of getting melanoma or skin cancer by 50%. Wow. So it's life-saving. And it's such an easy thing to do. It's not you're not going to go out your way particularly to do it. It's such an easy thing. It's an easy thing that you, that will, it's literally, I always say to my patients who come to see me, it's like putting on fresh underwear and wear it and brushing your teeth in the morning. It's a vi- It's a non-negotiable. Yeah. You have to put your SPF, wear your sunscreen. There are songs about this. There's a song <laughs> called Wear Your Sunscreen. It's really important you wear your sunscreen to protect you from, from, from the harmful rays of the yeah. sun. So we're talking skin cancer, of course, pigmentation. And, and, you know, it's nice to not prematurely age as well. And if we know that 90% of premature aging comes from the sun and we know that sun protection protects us from that, then, hey, wearing SPF is going to make you look, it's probably the best anti-aging thing you can do. Yeah, definitely. So with all that, how does SPF work? What does it do? Okay, so there's different types of SPF. Um, And again, when I say SPF, remember that SPF is only really a measure of protection from UVB. It's important that you have it wear a, a broad spectrum SPF or okay. sun protection or sunscreen. Let's call it a sunscreen. A broad protection sunscreen is going to cover you and protect you from UVA and UVB. So both rays. Okay. okay. And that's really important to understand because most creams, people look at it and they will see the SPF and, yeah. they, and that's what they're going for. And you should really be wearing an SPF of 30 and above okay. all year round, come rain or shine. We'll talk about which ones. Not the ones that say, not in your foundation, not in your moisturizer. (laughs) It's important that you have a standalone SPF. But it's also important that you get a broad spectrum. So make sure that the bottle that you're you're purchasing says on a broad spectrum or has a UVA rating. So the SPF rating is a rating between 2 and 50 plus, Mm -hmm. 50 being one of the highest. And, and what that means is how much, again, protection you're getting. And SPF 30 is said to protect you against sun exposure by approximately 96 to 97%. Whereas an SPF of um, 50 protects you 98 to 99%, okay. which doesn't sound like a huge jump, but over the years it's cumulative. And I don't leave the house without an SPF of 50 because I know that that little commuta- sun damage is cumulative. So the damage that you do in your 20s isn't going to show straight away. It shows in your 40s and 50s, takes 20 years to come. So if you're protecting yourself 2%, 2%, 2% every year more, every day more, the compound effect is a 50% extra protection over a decade. Wow. So it's really important to, to wear, your, wear as high as you can. Yeah. So how it works depends on if it's chemical or if it's mineral, yes. and if it's a broad spectrum sunscreen or not a broad spectrum sunscreen. So basics is get your broad spectrum sunscreen, mm-hmm. get your SPF of 30 and above and look for your, a UV rating, UVA rating. And the Europe in Europe is different to America, which is yeah. different to Korea. In the Euro, European Union, we have a UVA star rating and yes. the stars indicate the level of protection. You really should be going for a protection level of UVA of four stars, not yeah. not less. So it goes zero stars to five stars. Yeah. Um, in other parts of the world, in America, they have PA. Okay. And PA is almost like a, a pigmentation a protection. Okay. And it comes in plus signs. Okay. So you can have one plus sign, you can have two plus signs, you can have three plus signs or four plus signs. So plus, 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 plus. I always wear her SPF 50 yeah. with a PA plus, 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 plus. So four pluses. So we're talking maximum protection even in the winter, even though I'm, I've am i got olive colored skin. Yeah. So Sophie, you need to be wearing SPF well, all year round yes. with your pale, pale, gorgeous skin. It's important. So how it works? Well, chemical SPFs work very different to mineral SPFs and have different ingredients in them. Yeah. So a chemical SPF relies on chemical ingredients okay. that take time to work. They undergo a chemical reaction, which is why your bottles will say, wear them 15 minutes before oh, exposure okay. to sun. So this chemical reaction takes place Mm -hmm. and then it becomes effective. And it usually has chemicals like avobenzone, homosalate, octinosalate, 
um, octinocrylene, and we can talk more about those ingredients later. And when there is sun exposure, it takes the sun light, mm -hmm. which is a form of energy, light energy, yeah. and changes it into heat. Okay? okay. So it diffuses the impact by changing the energy from light to heat. And it protects you from the effects of the light. However, in a patient who is prone to pigmentation, heat is also going to be a problem. Yeah. Not from a skincare, uh, not from a skin cancer point of view, but from a pigmentation yeah. point of view. So these are things that you need to understand. Mineral SPFs come from minerals. Mm -hmm. So they're not synthetic. Chemical SPFs are synthetic. Mineral SPFs are usually mined and there are two main ingredients of minerals. Zinc oxide, mm -hmm. same thing that we put on our baby's bottoms for, for mm -hmm. rashes and so on, pseudocreme and, and so on. Um, and titanium dioxide. Okay. And these minerals are large molecules that sit on the surface of the skin. They don't get absorbed into the body. They sit on the surface and when the light hits them, it reflects or deflects or scatters the rays. Okay. So it doesn't absorb and change it, it reflects it off, okay? okay? And you can see this really quite well in a skin scan. Yes. We've got a skin scanner yeah. in our clinic and we scan our patients every time they come in to look at the, what's going on beneath mm -hmm. the surface. You can see where patients are applying SPF. You can see where they're missing the application, which is usually corners of the mouth. Hardly anyone puts it on the lips. Most people uh, don't put enough around the eye area and all around the hairline and the neck it tends yeah. to get missed. So that, and, and I think it's really important that people remember to apply evenly and, no, and apply the right amount. What is the right amount? Great question. So again, SPF is that, that measurement, that 15, 20, 30, yeah. 40, 50, depends on um, a specific volume. Okay. okay. So that's, oh, you will only get SPF 30, for example, if that's what your bottle says, if you're using the right volume. Okay. And the right volume has been shown to be half a teaspoon or a two, two finger lengths. Okay. So no one's got a teaspoon, they're measuring it out. <laughs> What, they're do what I do is I literally apply it along the length of my finger, yes. my sun protection, my, my sunscreen, and I apply that all over my face. And that is enough to cover the face. In a patient who is covering their hair or has hair, that's enough for the face. If you are a man with a receding hairline or you're bald, you're going to need an extra finger length. Okay. Um, if you're covering your full body, you need about six uh, teaspoons. So that's important yes. to know. That's a lot, that isn't it? Yeah. yeah, definitely. What about if you were doing the neck? Would that be an extra finger length? Yes, that would be an extra finger length. And okay. also remember the back of the neck, the ears. So when I'm when I'm doing my children, yes, um, I'm doing their face, and then I go behind their ears, do their neck, do their do the back of their neck. Um, and my husband, who has a slightly receding hairline, needs to put a little bit more there as well. I know I'm like that with my husband with his ears. I'm like, don't forget your ears. He's like, it's fine. I'm like, no need to protect your ears as well because you do what you, you almost forget that they're there sometimes yeah. you? and you don't apply it so if a patient has darker skin mm -hmm. should can they use less spf or lower spf no no. <laughs> no no in short look the the even dark skin can get pigmentation and in fact yeah. most of my patients who i'm treating with for hyperpigmentation and sun damage are patients with asian backgrounds arab backgrounds skin of color patients with dark eyebrows dark hair dark eyes, darker skin tones, yeah. any exposure to sun, heat, um, mm -hmm. even trauma, scratches, etc., they will pigment. So their, their melanocytes, which are the pigment forming cells, get into hyperactivity and they pigment. The easiest way to protect yourself is wearing a broad spectrum SPF with okay. a high PA rating or UVA rating. Okay. So you must wear SPF, no matter if you are skin of color or, or not, or, or pale white, Caucasian. And know that everyone is at risk of developing skin cancer and hyperpigmentation. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> everyone everyone needs to wear it. In terms of children, yes. should children wear different, different SPF to adults? Can they wear the same? Great question. So when it comes to the regulatory authorities, mm -hmm. they say that there is no safe sunscreen for under six months old. Okay. So up to six months old, the best way to protect your children from the sun is no sun exposure. Okay. Um, and that means wearing appropriate clothing, covering them properly, um, using hats when they're out in the mm -hmm. sun. They are more susceptible to sun damage. And indeed, their skin doesn't have the ability to protect itself. What is a tan? A tan is when your melanocytes, your pigment forming cells, mm -hmm. lay down pigment. And there's different types of pigment that can be laid down depending on your skin color. 
uh, whether you have eumelanin or fumelanin, and that that's a, another topic. <laughs> um, but essentially what happens is that tan is your body's way of trying to protect the cells from damage. It's trying to create a physical screen. That is what a tan is. And that's why we medical professionals say there is no such thing as a safe tan because a tan is a reflection of the fact that the body is going into save myself mode, crisis mode. Oh. It is trying to stop the penetration of the UV rays into going into the DNA of the cells mm -hmm. and creating cellular damage and creating cancer, malignancy. Okay. So that is what a tan is. That, that's why your son, that's why your body is designed to do that. Your body is very, very clever. It's designed to protect itself, but there's only so much that it can do. Yeah. Children don't have that same ability, babies. And that's why the, the regulatory authorities um, all say, and professional bodies all say, wait until six months before your children have any or your babies have any mm -hmm. sun exposure. After which there are only two ingredients that are deemed safe by the European Commission and the FDA, which is an American authority. And these two ingredients are titanium dioxide mm -hmm. and zinc oxide. These are mineral sun screen okay. ingredients. Now that's not to say that chemical SPFs are not safe, but the volume, the amount that they have will impact that safety. And therefore okay. there's very close regulation about how much, what the percentage of that ingredient is. And I'll explain why. Um, so chemical SPFs are tiny, tiny, tiny synthetic ingredients. When you apply them on the skin, they are absorbed through the skin barrier into the bloodstream and they okay. circulate around the body. Now, this is a matter of huge debates within the medical yeah. industry because there have been some studies to show that those ingredients may have a systemic effect, particularly on our endocrine system, which means our hormones, right? Okay. So they can impact hormonal regulation. So there are question marks about whether this should be used and what is a safe dose when it comes to chemical SPFs. Mm -hmm. And there have been several studies, particularly over the last few years, one in 2020, one in 2021, that looked at chemical SPFs sold over the counter. They looked at 20 SPFs yeah. sold over the counter and 19 out of 20 of them resulted in higher levels of this chemical in the systemic circulation than what was otherwise once thought, okay? And there is a limit because of the potential toxicity. Now that doesn't mean throw away your chemical SPS yeah. because what the FDA is currently saying is, well, we don't know that that chemical that is circulating around the body will have a detrimental effect on the body. However, it is still, it's a fact. It is going to be absorbed and it will be going around the body. Yeah. So the question mark is, is it relevant? Does it, ha does it create any, any problems? When it comes, so there's a question mark there. Yeah. It's a matter that requires further research. Um, and when it comes to my children, I do not put chemical, chemical sunscreens on them. They exclusively wear mineral SPFs or mineral sunscreens, broad yeah. spectrum. Um, and the one that I use and, that, and I recommend to all of my patients is the Think a Baby sunscreen, which is a mm -hmm. mineral sunscreen. And for myself, I wear the Color Science Body Shield, which is one of my favorite brands. So... Yeah, it's important to understand that they work differently. And, um, and and for children, you need to really take a little bit of extra care and watch this space. Let's see what happens and what develops. You know, I've seen a lot of online debates at the moment regarding the safety and the efficacy of, of sun protection, um, particularly with regards to these chemicals. For my patients and patients who are acne prone, rosacea, sensitive skin, who have pigmentation, which are 90% of my patients, I never recommend a chemical SPF. No or sunscreen. And the re see, again, I'm getting into this mode of saying SPF, I need to be saying sunscreen. And, and the reason why is these chemicals can cause sensitivities. You hear patients say all the time, I don't wear a sunscreen because it causes me to get acne. My skin yes. is sensitive. It reacts. I don't like that greasy feel. Switch your sun protection, switch your sunscreen. You'll find that it's different. And, and actually zinc oxide, which as I said to you earlier, is what we put on our baby's bottoms when they have rashes, yeah. nappy rashes. Zinc oxide is an incredible ingredient that has been found to actually heal the skin. So it's fantastic in patients who have rosacea, inflammation, mm -hmm. or acne. It helps to heal their acne. So you not only are you taking away that chemical component that yeah. can irritate the skin, you're safeguarding them from that systemic absorption, but also there is the added benefit of improving the skin health. 
So that's that's it. That's the kind of the lay down on um, on sun protection. And yes, we do have chemical uh, sunscreens in our clinic. I really do reserve those for patients who, you know, who who maybe are on a budget because chemicals are cheaper than minerals. And the best sunscreen is a sunscreen that you wear. Chemicals better than nothing. Yeah. Mineral, in my opinion, is better than chemical because of this question mark, because mm -hmm. we know that it's absorbed systemically and because it can result in sensitivity to the skin and because it converts the sun's light rays into heat, which will cause pigmentation in pigment prone patients. Okay. Wow. I'll take your message from that then was, <laughs> even if it's chemical, still wear it. Don't yeah. go without SPF. Absolutely. Don't go without SPF. Okay. There's, there's a few things that you must never do, which is don't wear an expired sunscreen. If it's expired, chuck it away. Don't keep your sunscreen in the sun, particularly if it's chemical sunscreen, because it's just going to undergo that chemical change mm. and it will become less effective. Um, and make sure that you top up your sun protection. Your sun protection, a lot of people are putting it on at 8 a.m. and think that they've, you know, they've, they've done themselves a favor and they're done for the day. That's just not the reality. Adequate sun protection needs to be maintained throughout the day. As okay. our days get longer, we need to be topping up our sun protection. So check the back of your bottles to know how often to top up. Okay. Sun protection, generally speaking, chemical SPS needs to be topped up every 90 minutes. So an hour and a half. Okay. Some of them will say top up every hour. Some will say two hours. Some will say three or four. If you're in, even if it says water resistant, if you're getting in the water yeah. or you're sweating, so you're going swimming, you're coming out, you need to reapply your sun yes. protection. Even if you're not swimming, you are sweating and that is going to impact the efficacy of that barrier. Mm -hmm. So you need to top up. And also it just becomes less effective over time. So usually my my rule, my advice to my patients is top up every two hours. Yeah. And I know that can be difficult, particularly for women, less so for men because they're not wearing makeup and women are like, oh, I just put my makeup on, I don't want to ruin it. There are ways that you can do that without yes. ruining your makeup. So first and foremost, my advice would be uh, find a sun protection that you like. Yeah. And in, in patients who are dry skin, go for a cream-based formula. They yeah. tend to be quite moisturizing. In a patient who is oily, you might want to go for a gel-based formula. I'm oily. I still prefer cream-based formulas, okay. but I use an exclusive mineral base. Yeah. Um, and I find that that really helps uh, my skin and is an amazing primer actually under my makeup. Go for a tinted one. A tinted sun protection has been found to give more sun protection okay. than a non-tinted. So particularly for patients who are pigment prone, mm -hmm. remember that there's visible light as well. Visible light will cause pigmentation. Yeah. So wear a tinted SPF mm -hmm. and that will give you even more protection. And then if you've got a nice kind of tinted one, I love the Color Science Flex. You can reapply it with a beauty blender. Okay. So you can just take a little bit more and reapply it after a couple of hours. You can get blush sticks as well, yes. which is so popular. I think we like, we these sell out in our mm -hmm. clinic uh, every year. They are fantastic. They come in different shades. I love the blush one. It suits all skin shades and tones. Um, and you can apply it along the cheek contours and add it. Now, we've got to talk about SPF contouring because I think there's a, this, there was uh, someone, what, what was her name? There was a celebrity online that did that. Can't remember her name. Probably better. I don't remember her name. Um, <laughs> she she went online and she was sharing. She did her like, get ready with me. And she shared that she applied sunscreen to only particular areas of the face that was receiving extra sun because she wanted to get contoured. And it was the most appalling, worst possible advice anyone could oh give. Goodness. So applying it only in the bridge of the nose, only along the cheekbones, <laughs> and essentially leaving all of the other areas of the, of the face exposed. Like, you know, only certain areas are going to get sun, skin cancer. It is a ridiculous notion. It is an unsafe notion. It is totally dangerous. You must fully protect your mm -hmm. face. Apply, uh, uh, apply it all over the face. None of this contouring malarkey. Um, <laughs> But when you are topping up, sure, you don't have to put as much as you did the first time. Okay. So you can use your you can use your beauty blender to reapply. If you're a man, just put on some more cream. If you're a woman, you can use your beauty blender and then use your blush stick. That's what I do. You can use powders. There's a Color Science powder and a Zeto Skin Health powder. Yeah. But it's important to note that the amount of sun protection is dependent on the amount of powder that you're applying yeah. or the cream that you're applying. The majority of powders, there's not enough coming yeah. out of it. So... Take out, if you've got the Zedo Skin Health one, take out the back, yeah. dip your brush into the powder and apply it uh, that way. Okay. Otherwise you are not getting enough to really top up your sun protection. Yeah. 
Um, and remember, if you're applying your SPF at eight o'clock, by 10 a.m. it's gone yeah. and you're exposed to the sun from 10 till 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. You know, w what are you doing? This is not a sun protection. So you need to be applying it 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m., yeah. 2 p.m., et cetera. Okay. So you really need to apply it top up as much as you can, particularly if you're going outside and you're in the sun. You can also get a spray. Yes. So the Helio Care spray is a great spray that you can apply on the face to protect and you apply it on top of mm -hmm. your, uh, on top of your, um, uh, makeup. And then there's also a wonderful mesostatic spray, which has actually become my favorite now. Mm -hmm. And again, you just apply it and it's activated in the sun and it protects you. The thing to bear in mind about sprays is the majority of them are chemical. Okay. I haven't come across a mineral spray yet. You should not inhale them. You cannot apply them into your eyes or your mouth. Okay. So hold your breath while you're doing the spray because it's not healthy to inhale them. They can cause damage to the lungs. So be very careful also when applying them on your children. I only top up my children's legs and arms. I never top up their face with a spray. I will reapply with a cream. Yeah. So these are the little things that I think shouldn't be overlooked and patients need to be aware of. Yeah, no, definitely. And another thing I think is where to apply your sunscreen. So anywhere that you have sun exposure, mm -hmm. um, the face, hands, feet, yeah. <laughs> uh, neck, decolletage, particularly now in the sun, uh, in the summer months when people are wearing sleeveless, put your SPF on the face, drag it down to your neck, put it on your decolletage, cover your shoulders, cover your arms. Um, don't forget your lips. Your lips are a source, uh, are an area that is one of the most common areas to get oral cancer. The lips are one of the most common. The first most common is under the tongue, which is a painless ulcer. And the second most common is on the lips. So it's really important that if you have a non-healing ulcer or look, something that looks like flaky skin on the lips, that it isn't going away or um, an area that's bleeding that isn't going away after two weeks or something that looks like a cold sore that isn't going away, you need to go and get that checked. Oh. Any brown spots on the lips that suddenly appear that are getting larger, you need to go and get that checked. Lip can oral cancer on the lips is, is actually super common. And that's because most people don't apply SPF sun protection to no. their lips. So get yourself an SPF stick or a lip balm with S uh, sun protection in it and apply that to your lips. Apply, a, use it, I like to use a stick around the eye area. And then you can't protect your eyes, can you? You can't put a sun protection in your eyes, but your eyes can also undergo sun damage. So wear sunglasses when you're out and your sunglasses should have a CE mark, which means it has been checked. The UV filters of that those sunglasses okay. have been checked. If you're buying it from the pound market, the pound store is probably actually causing more damage than good because it's causing dilation of the pupils when you're wearing sun uh, sunglasses that don't have adequate UV protection, that darkness that it gives, that filter that it gives results in your, your pupils dilating. So you're taking in more sun rays and you're causing damage. Make sure your sun, your sunglasses, your sunglasses are an investment, not just to look pretty, look good. You know, it's an added yeah. bonus, but make sure that they are UV filtered. Wow. I need to go and get some new sunglasses yeah. <laughs> and maybe a nice new lip balm. Yeah. Speaking of lip balms, yeah. makeup, creams. We often have patients come in and go, it's okay. I've got SPF 15 in my moisturizer that I apply once a day. Yeah. Is that good enough? Absolutely not. I actually get really surprised by how many people think that that's okay. And again, it comes down to education. I think, you know, at school, everyone's taught to brush your teeth tw tw twice a day. I think anyway, like, you know, yeah. is that still being taught? I hope so. <laughs> uh, but nobody's been taught about sun protection. I came from a generation that wasn't taught to wear sun protection. Mm -hmm. And actually, even when I'm talking to my parents um <laughs> in their generation it's kind of like a taboo we survived you know where we serve that our ancestors survived and and cavemen survived without sun protection why do we need to well cavemen probably died at 30 yeah. you know we are living much longer and because we are living much longer we are developing age-related diseases one of which is cancer and we know that 90 percent of premature aging comes from the sun and we know that sun is responsible for 50 percent of melanomas so now more than ever, while our lifespan is extending, we need to be really mindful to extend our health span. If you want healthy skin, wear sunscreen, non-negotiable. Yeah. And your sunscreen in your moisturizer is just not gonna cut it. Your sunscreen in your foundation, you asked about foundation, not gonna cut it. Most, um, suns, most mo foundations come with an SPF of 15. Okay. But SPF 15, is not enough. And nobody is applying two finger lengths of foundation or half a teaspoon of foundation. And remember that the measurement, the dose, 
mm-hmm. the amount, the volumetric amount is what gives that SPF its rating. Yeah. So if you're using an SPF 30, but you're just using a pea-sized amount, that's not going to give you SPF 30 protection. If yeah. you spread it out too thinly, you're not going to get the protection in that bottle. So it's really important that you're putting the right volumetric dose. And if you're using a foundation with SPF 15, first of all, that's not going to last very long. And second of all, that is nowhere near the protection that you need. No. So use a standalone sun sunscreen. Most, if you, you know, moisturizers with sun protection in them is not a good idea. No. But sun protection with moisturizing factors in it are good. So kind of the other way around yeah. because your moisturizers with your sun protection in it are going to be somewhat diluted. It's kind of like shampoo and conditioner, that two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Any hairdresser is going to say, use a, use a shampoo standalone, use a conditioner standalone because yeah. you're diluting it. Same thing. Use your moisturizer standalone, use your sun protection standalone or skip your moisturizer and use a sun protection with moisturizing factors because that sun cream yeah. has been regulated tested, verified, and has got a stamp of approval to give it that rating based on that volumetric dose. So as long as you're using two finger lengths okay. of sunscreen mm-hmm. with, uh, and if it says it's got moisturizing factors like ceramides, hyaluronic acid, glycerine in it, that's all an added fantastic bonus, yeah. but it's not going to be diluting your um, SPF. So most SPFs nowadays do have a moisturizing element to it, and that's fine. If you want to skip your moisturizer and use an SPF with moisturizing elements, yeah. fine. But a moisturizer with SPF 15, absolutely hell no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Avoid. 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 Going back to you speaking of a, of tan, a question came into my head. And yes. I, I know what the answer is going to be, but I feel like people maybe still don't understand the risks of it. Sunbeds. Sunbeds have been categorically classified as carcinogens by the FDA. That means it is known to cause cancer. So every time you're going into a sunbed, know that you are putting yourself at risk of developing cancer. There is no safe sunbed. No. Sunbeds are, to me, should be outlawed, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there is absolutely no health benefit to them. The damage far outweighs any you know, beautification factor. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a no from me. It's a hard no from me. Yeah. Don't do it. Wear, you know, you wear yourself tanning, cover your, bronze yourself up by all means, but wearing, going under the sunbeds is, is, is a nonsensical notion that is unsafe and we should all know better nowadays. Yeah, no, definitely. It's quite scary. I've never used one, but I know growing up, there would be girls maybe in lunch breaks going for a sunbed. Yeah. I just couldn't. Yeah. And underage as well, at that underage yeah. as well. But yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. really, really scary. It's it's actually terrifying. And and I think, thankfully, I think the tide is changing. More people yeah. are becoming aware. But the rates of skin cancer are rising exponentially, particularly in the UK. Although we hardly have any sun because 20%, 25%, a quarter of the British public don't wear adequate sun protection and people don't realise that risk. So uh, now more and more they are, and they are wearing some protection. But again, I think there are a lot of a lot of people, a huge percentage of patients, think that their moisturizers with SPF or their foundation with SPF is doing the trick. Um, but sunbeds, I think, um, more and more are realizing is a no. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a known carcinogen. So why would you do something that you know is going to cause you cancer, has potential to cause you cancer? Just don't do it. Yeah. So are there any trends that you think are dangerous? Yeah. When it comes to the sun. When it comes to the sun. sun Well, facial contouring, trying to apply your your SPF in certain areas of the face is highly dangerous um, and should never, ever, ever be done. Number two, have you seen this fad? I talked about it on my Instagram. I did a little reel about it last year where women were going into the sun, raising their legs without underwear, so that they could get sun exposure down below. Um, <laughs> yeah, literally, that was a fad. Um, and, and you know, here's the thing with trends, they will come and go, but it's really important that as medical professionals, we strongly condemn such nonsensical statements that pa- put patients at risk. Vulva cancer, vaginal cancer is a thing. Getting sun exposure down below is not necessary, is not natural, and is not the way to get your vitamin D. So absolutely do not do that. Um, diluting your your sunscreen. I've seen this d- done quite a lot as well where people are kind of mixing it with water because they think it's going to be blended in better. Nonsense, don't bother doing that. You're, like I said earlier, your sun protection is 
uh, measured in in a volumetric dose, you need two finger lengths. Um, other dangerous fads. There are so many TikTok fads actually. They're coming out taking su- sunbeds fads yeah. hopefully will die in, in due course but is a known carcinogen so absolutely don't do that taking tablets that induce a suntan yes i've seen these yeah, yeah this is dangerous there is absolutely no scientific evidence around them in terms of their safety or the efficacy it's like the lemon bottle which is nonsense anyone listening to this do not do lemon bottle um it is a it's a nonsensical dangerous fad if you are taking tablets to cause hypermelanosis and induce a suntan, you don't know what that is actually going to do. You don't know if that's going to cause hyperstimulation um, of the melanocytes, which can cause a melanoma. So please don't do that. Until there is better scientific evidence, do not do that. Can you take antioxidant supplements? Sure, take that if you want, but that doesn't negate the need to use sun protection. So the, the take home message is use a broad spectrum sun protection all year, year round. Which sunscreen you want to use, to be honest with you, the best sunscreen is the one that you are going to wear. Not all sunscreens are going to suit you. That's okay. Sometimes you have to kiss a few frogs to find your yeah. pants. F- try different SPFs until you find the one that you like. Mm. My go-tos, my absolute favorites are by far the color science yeah. range. I don't get any commission for this. I, I should, but I don't. <laughs> I don't want commission. I want to tell my patients the truth. This is what I use on my face. This is what I use at home. For my children, I use Think a Baby. Top up your sun protection. Yeah. Uh, using it, p- applying it only once is simply not good enough. Um, and it's important to understand that it's no longer effective. So if you're putting it on at 8 a.m., you are not covered by 10 a.m. onwards. Um, and if you want to really boost your sun protection, use a use a vitamin C underneath or use um, an antioxidant serum. Vitamin C has been shown to improve your sun protection eightfold. So it makes wow. it eight times stronger and more effective. But of course, that's only if it's suited to your skin type. Yeah. So there you go. That's your take home. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that knowledge. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Thank you.